It's to me at the other camera. I goofed that up from the right from the very beginning. That's that's unusual. Usually I wait till the end. Hello everybody. It's Monday at 7 p.m. We are here at the beautiful WeBeamTV.com studios in Newport Ritchie, Florida, with our 10th episode of 62 Who Knew. We're going to give a quick scenario or a quick synopsis of what 62 Who Knew is for those of you that haven't listened before. 62 Who Knew is a television show that really looks into exploring the double-edged sword or the mixed blessing, however you want to put it, of longer lifespans. The fact that modern technology, scientific and medical breakthroughs have given our generation, my generation, just turned 60 about two months ago, uh, this generation has an obstacle or at least a, a bump in the road that no other obstacle will ever face or has ever faced before, and that is longer lifespans. The fact that once you get to your mid-60s, the truth is you're going to, the odds are very, very good, you're going to get to your early to mid-90s. And as we learned from my guest four weeks ago from the uh, Weizmann Institute in Israel, that's soon going to be in the hundreds. So what do we need to do to make sure that that last 30 years of our life is high quality? Who knew at 62 that you'd have this many choices to make and this many goals still to achieve? So this show is going to go over real estate purchases, social security, the benefits of taking it now or deferring it. Should I have long-term care insurance? Should do we need in-home care protection? Final expense insurance, life insurance. There's just it's just a plethora. I've always loved that word, plethora. It's just a plethora of topics to help us all get from our 60s to our 90s with the highest quality of life possible because there's no reason to live that long if we're not going to enjoy it. So without further ado, though, we're not going to spend too much time. Today we have a very special guest, and it is the first guest that we ever had on show number one 10 weeks ago, and it is, ta-da, Dr. Ta-da. as we go to double shot, Dr. Lisa Marie Kennedy was our first guest 10 weeks ago. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having and, uh, me, Michael. Yeah, I'm just so happy that you're back. I'm sorry it's been 10 weeks. No. We have had a... Uh, uh, you, I know you've been watching the show. Some incredible guests, long-term oh care insurance gosh. people, the Weitzman Institute, uh, an amazing elder law attorney. Uh, two weeks ago before the holiday, mm-hmm. we actually had an institute in here um, that does stem cell uh, therapy with people. And we're, it's just amazing it's what incredible. we've been covering. And it's I incredible always, that you've been able to get those type of guests. It's, Kudos yeah, to you. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. We can hear them now. Now, I, we, we always have thousands of viewers. We're growing. Uh, I keep saying our website is being modified, and it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking for ways to reach more people. Yep. In fact, if you are somewhere in the United States, in fact, you don't even have to be in the United States since one of our guests was from Israel, and you feel that you have a topic that you are well-known and versed upon uh, about this particular area of 62 Who Knew, about getting through the next 30 years, then please contact us either at 62whoknew.com or at mbanner at 62whoknew.com or on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and better yet, share this out, guys. Yes. Go ahead and share this out, especially to those of you that have parents that are entering these golden years, right? Are they still Golden years, golden yes. Golden years? Yes. Sh- <laughs> share, share this out because there's so much valuable information, not just this week, previous episodes. Make sure you subscribe to WeBeam TV and the 62 Who Knew Facebook page. You're really good at this. You need to come no. back a lot more <laughs> often than just 10 weeks. Thanks. All right. Well, before we get started talking to you about what's new in the last 10 weeks, mm-hmm. because the market has changed, the real estate market. It's definitely mm-hmm. shifting. We're mm-hmm. definitely going to delve into, again, the psychology or, or at least the, the day-to-day of why it is different when you're talking to somebody in their 60s, 70s, or 80s to sell them a house yeah. um, or list their house mm-hmm. as opposed to somebody in their 30s or 40s. So before we get into that and talk about what's new, um, let's just quickly, just really quickly, because right before uh, we came on air, I saw something uh, on my phone uh, that said Hurricane Florence is going to be uh, is up to a a uh, type four and uh, yeah it is going to be pelting um, the coast of Carolina almost the entire uh, sea coast is under mandatory oh, I got chills when you said yeah, that. Under mandatory because, evacuation yeah mandatory so evacuation. our thoughts and uh, prayers are are all going out to all of you in South Carolina please stay safe yeah, um, yeah and we, like, we were dealing with this this ex- I saw my Facebook yeah. memories this exact same time last year Hurricane Irma yeah that gives me the chills just yeah. like you said just thinking about yeah, it just thinking about it because it is scary especially for someone that's moving to Florida from a different location that's not used to hurricanes yeah. at all let alone a cat four or a cat five yeah. it is definitely a very scary situation but we do send our our prayers and you know just be smart you know yeah. go to a place uh, a shelter 
or whatever that might be, typically yes. at schools or whatnot. And uh, just keep just keep safe, you guys. Yeah, stay safe no matter what. And um, anyway, all our good thoughts out to you. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the first seg segment. Always goes quick because we have the introduction, and then right away we're going to a commercial. Mm -hmm. But we still have a, a little time in our first segment. There's definitely been a big change in the last 10 weeks. It's been a seller's market in most of Florida, mm -hmm. in fact, in most of the country. But as a mortgage person, I'm seeing that trend change pretty quickly, almost into a buyer's market. What are you seeing yeah. in Southwest Florida? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Michael. And I was just having this conversation with one of my other mortgage lenders as well as one of my clients. It's, there are it's, other mortgage lenders? Yeah, believe it or not, but you're my favorite. Okay. Uh, so there are, I, I'm finding there are pockets of buyer's markets in different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to agents from the Tampa Bay area, the Lakewood Ranch area, Sarasota, Bradenton, even down to the Venice Northport area, mm -hmm. where a lot of our, our buyers are looking at as well, because it's a little bit less populated. But you'll find in certain neighborhoods, the more affluent, I think, yeah. gated, um, you know, resort style communities, mm -hmm. that those established ones are more of a buyer's market, yeah. because they do have so much to choose from. Yes. Um, versus other markets where, you know, you have pockets of Tampa, which things don't stay on the market very long. Yeah. So we really, uh, and there's a lot of pockets throughout the country. People don't understand, even some real estate agents, since I traveled the country doing some speaking about reverse mortgages, mm -hmm. you know, when you say it's a seller's market and you say that, you know, somebody would call us for a pre-approval letter at my office <laughs> and we'll get the pre-approval to them in, in 30 minutes, yeah. the real estate agent will make an offer. We'll call back the next day and say, did you get it? And they go, oh, there was three offers there before us. Um, kind of a staggering situation, but that are we heading? Do you think for another? There's a lot of people that think we're heading for a little um, glut, a little mini recession. That prices came up too quick yeah. and too sudden. What do you think? What are you seeing in your part of Southwest Florida? I'm I'm not seeing that happening. I'm certainly seeing a shift. As you <coughs> obviously, you know, uh, things are changing a little bit. Mortgage interest rates and stuff like that. But it's not. I don't think we're headed into a volatile situation mm -hmm. at all. I think it it'll. It'll change. I don't think it's going to change rapidly, but, you know, I don't have Who a knows? crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, nobody does. If we did, we wouldn't be doing this TV show <laughs> if we had a crystal ball. Let's talk about something that's a little, we're going to go into the psychology of, of older borrowers. We're going to talk about that in the second and mm -hmm. third and fourth segment. We're going to talk a lot about that. But I, I'm interested in something now. Most people know in, well, everybody knows in Florida and a lot of people across the country because they're seeing the news that we're, we're suffering a worse red tide mm. than we have in years. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've been in Florida a long time. Red tide is not uncommon. I mean, it, it smells really bad. Mm -hmm. There's dead fish. Yeah. And yet you're telling me that you have a couple of really beautiful listings on the water and that people are hesitating making a offer on them because of the red tide. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something obvious here, but red tide is not permanent. It does not affect the value of the home. Mm -hmm. Is it psychological? I mean, obviously you walk into a million dollar home and things smell bad because they're right on the water. Obviously that affects things, but sure. it's not there forever. It never is. No. Why is that stopping somebody from making an offer on a home on the water in Florida that they feel is a good deal? Yeah, it, is it's it a psychological? great question. I believe it is because let's face it, red tide has been around for hundreds of centuries. It's an evolution of you know marine. Uh, phenomenon, if you will, that has happened over hundreds of years. So is this year a little bit worse than past? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, I think we went on six weeks and then it cleared up and then it depended on the winds. I, I'm not an expert at red tide. You know, then you got to add this whole algae thing in from from the lakes and, and whatnot. And I'm certainly not an expert on that. But what I can tell you, it has activity in real estate gone down on Anna Maria Island and some of the barrier islands. Yeah. And I think that has Partly, in do, it's due to the fact that people are postponing their trips here. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's so much they're not putting an offer in. <coughs> I think it's more like, hey, we're not going to come down right now because we can't capitalize. We, we'll probably be buying a house eventually while we're there or at least looking. But we're not going to be able to have fun and go yeah, in the no, ocean. That makes sense. So we're going to postpone that visit. I'm seeing more of that. Okay. That does make more sense to me than, hey, I don't want to live there. There's red tide. And, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing that from real estate agents. Yeah. We're not getting offers because of the red tide. It just, well, I it like what you're saying. Well, it came Pinellas that. County. Yeah. You know, it came up this way. And I believe this past weekend was fine. And mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend was fine in Pinellas County. But, right. you know. Is it moving south? I believe now Venice, the Venice area, what I saw on the news. Mm -hmm. uh, a beach down there. But nonetheless, 
the takeaway is that it's not permanent. Yeah. It doesn't last forever. That's like someone saying, I'm not going to come to Florida because Hurricane Irma, yeah. you know, came here last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know when you're moving to Florida that that is one it's of... Part of our lives. Part of our lives. Have you noticed this last week, 10 days? I know how it's been because you're at least, what, about 50, 60 miles south of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our summer... Our daily rainstorms in the last 10 days in Clearwater, in our area of Florida, mm -hmm. have not been your average summer rainstorms. They have been massive, oh, yeah. little, yeah. just amazing storms. And we'll talk, we've got about 30, well, has it been like that, Sal? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking wind and lightning. Thunder, I'm lightning, thaws wind, outside my, you know, out torrential my rain. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I wonder why. Does that have something to do with all the hurricane? It can't have anything to do with us. Uh, it, it has to be red tide. It, it's got to be red, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're going to blame everything. I'm red tide going forward. We even have a red background. It's so beautiful. We do. And I still say if you're if the water's turning red, paint your house blue. Let your let your glass be half filled. Just match your ocean. We're gonna have to take a break in about three seconds and we're gonna come back and talk about trends with senior borrowers. Thank you. At Dr. B Pediatric Dentistry, we understand the individuality of each child. And they also teach us how to take care of our teeth. And offer an exceptional and gentle dental care experience for all children. With our laser procedures, we are able to provide gentler treatments and faster healing time. Come meet Dr. B. A vitality freak. Call Dr. B's Pediatric Dentistry today. Hi, my name is Mike Banner, and in addition to being the host of the 62 Who Knew television show, I am also the president of Professional Mortgage Alliance, where our passion is helping seniors entering retirement purchase their dream retirement home without the obligation of a monthly principal and interest payment. Please call me at 727-224-3859 or visit my website at professionalmortgagealliance.com. My name is Ann Rogers and I'm a real estate agent and broker in Pinellas County and have been for over 24 years. Ann Rogers Relocation Resources provides a full array of services to help you or your loved one transition gracefully to a new residence or adult living community. Our first consultation is free and with no obligation. Please visit our website or call to talk to me directly. My name is Lisa Marie Kennedy, your real estate expert here in the Sarasota, Lakewood Ranch, Bradenton area. I spent years developing myself, studying the industry so I can serve you and communicate with you the best way possible in your real estate transaction. My phone number is 941-807-2054 or please visit my website at lisamariekennedy.com. Okay. And we're back. And before we go back to Lisa to talk to something, I want to remind you of if you were watching commercials, Lisa has a fantastic commercial um, uh -huh. on, our, uh, on our show. And please give her a call. I, I've been accused 
Actually, the last 10 weeks, I'm trying not to sell. We want to educate. But that being said, we also have to pay the bills, and we have sponsors, and we have things. I've actually had people say, Michael, you don't push it enough. Uh, we well, have some a, great... It's a, it's a gentle reminder. Yeah, it's a, it's a very gentle reminder to call Lisa and buy a house. Right? <laughs> or list buy, a house. You know, it's, a list it's house. It's all fine. And not a little house. And, and here's, here's the really bigger big thing. house on the water. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what a lot of people don't know, Michael, is that you know I have a referral base all over Florida. So That's something we want to talk about. Yes. Yeah, so whether you're looking on the east coast of Florida or in the Panhandle or down in Miami, you know, my brokerage has a huge mm -hmm. referral network and I could get you an agent like that. Yeah. So, and, you know, when you're looking to find a professional, you don't want to just hire someone off the Internet. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. this is the Internet. But you know the bigger sites. I'm not going to go naming all of right. them. But you don't. You know nothing about yeah. that person. You just no, you know don't. that it popped up and says so and so says recommends this person. Right. So unless you go digging a little bit, yeah. Um, you know, I would prefer to hire someone like you or myself, whom I've seen on TV before. Yeah, and, and truthfully, even you know, do I wish we were on. Uh, you know, a major network and we had 50 million viewers, yes, but the truth of the matter is everybody that has been on the show the last 10 weeks mm -hmm. um, is not just a friend. I mean, you and I only met several months ago, yeah. but I have checked out thoroughly with the reputation, honesty, integrity. If we're going to build this little show into what I want it to be within a few years, then you have to bring on people with that honesty and integrity. Right. So yes, if you're moving anywhere uh, in the state of Florida, contact Lisa. Her information's on her uh, commercial, or you can get to her through 62 Who News website. Um, please do that because you'll be a it'll be a tremendous advantage for her, to thank have you her for the plug. on your team. And so you let's as well. oh, oh thank you so much. So let's now talk about uh, it was a very popular topic 10 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody in their 30s calls you and says, "I'm married and." I have two children, and my wife is pregnant, and having another child. And we want to, we want to move. And I'd be like, "Great, yeah, let's great. do it." <laughs> but then again, there's the call that, "Hi, I'm 62. Yeah. I'm 65. We just sold our house in New Jersey, or whatever, and I'm coming to Florida to retire." Totally different psychology. Totally different needs. Tell us a little bit about that, because this is your level of expertise. Yeah, a completely different conversation. You know, I learned early on in my real estate career. Uh, with that type of clientele that it was a different conversation that I couldn't just you know ask the basic questions about you know getting a mortgage and this and that mm -hmm. it was more about you know what is what is your lifestyle what why are you moving and it always came down to family yeah it always came down to you know I've worked my whole entire life it was rarely about money mm -hmm. conversation is really about money when um, it's their hate for lack of a better word final home forever home uh, because they've worked their entire lives for this, you know, they've saved in their 401k for this, mm -hmm. and this is it, and it's the perfect one. They want to design it, they want to build it, they want to have as many, you know, they want a certain view, they want a certain exposure, you mm -hmm. know, they want to see the sunset from their living room, their yep. kitchen, and it's very specific <coughs> versus I want to be in a great school for my kids. Right, Now you also just mentioned something else, I want to build it, yeah. and w which is a constant I won't say argument, but debate between myself and many national mortgage people. Mm. I know there is, obviously, building a home to your own specs mm -hmm. is incredible. Incredible. Most of the time, a dinosaur like me leans away from that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a real estate person. I'm a mortgage person, so I don't lean sure. my client in either way. But unless that person truly or unless that builder, and there we have so many great builders here in Florida, we do. has some spec homes that are already partially built, I don't know, maybe, it's, maybe I'm meeting the wrong kind of people. People that come down are, are not wanting to move somewhere, wait for their house six months to 12 months to be built, and then move again. Now, that being said, there is a trend in this nation right now mm -hmm. to go right to the builder and bypass the NMLS. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in Southwest Florida about that? Well, I think it's different when you, there, for me, there's a few different categories of building, right? You have your custom luxury, mm -hmm. then you have your semi-custom, right. and then you have your spec. Semi-custom being like sort of track homes with different elevations? Yeah, maybe you can pick your flooring, maybe right. you can pick certain elements of the home, mm -hmm. maybe you can add a bonus room or a second garage or right. or whatever it is. Um, you know, it, it's it's already permitted to do a certain design right. and, and you can change a, a few different things versus someone that says, you know what, I want this amount of land, mm -hmm. I want this amount of bedrooms, I want a bonus room upstairs, I want it to have a bar, I want it to have an ice maker here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, the custom home building process is very specific. Mm -hmm. 
and you know I want the builder to to position it on that home site so I see uh, so I'm facing west so I see that sunset every single night absolutely that's what my they, dream retirement home is gonna be yeah facing they've west. dreamt about it their whole entire life and by the way I want to attract the rest of my family my children my grandchildren and make it so attractive that they want to come all mm -hmm. the time yeah because that's how you want to spend your last now, I see 40. that for the pure custom home. Now, is this still, I asked you this question 10 weeks ago, and I was surprised at your answer. Mm -hmm. Is there still a fair amount of builders in the southwest part of Florida that have that middle of the road that somebody could come down and go, look, we're moving in two months, and I want to move in yes. for 10 weeks, but not nine months. Yes. There is. You see, that always surprises me. In the million-dollar range, available and okay. ready to move in today. All right, but what about, let's say that, quite frankly, that... 250 to 450 range, which is the average of the country. Yes. That's, they, they still in, have that. In a gated that. country club golf community. Mm -hmm. And they're there. I could say one tomorrow. D could you? Yes. <laughs> See? And I will. <laughs> and, and she will. Uh, you're allowed to shamelessly name. Uh, you're, you're absolutely, name some of these subdivisions. I mean, you, okay. I yeah. mean, where you specialize is one of the, you know, it is one of the most popular unique. PUDs. By the way, a PUD is a planned unit development i'm not saying anything yes. bad here on or on master TV. plan community lakewood yes. ranch was actually mm -hmm. named the second largest growing master plan community of 2017 and 2018 right behind the villages in right. ocala so when we're talking about these different villages if mm -hmm. you will uh, i believe we're up to 14 or 15. oh wow yeah they're in process but just to name a few, the Lake Club at Lakewood Ranch, mm -hmm. Country Club East of Lakewood Ranch, mm -hmm. Indigo at Lakewood Ranch. Um, you know, I live in one of the original uh, villages. Original at Lakewood Ranch. Original, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Lakewood Ranch is actually 20 years old. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you pull into this place and you go, oh, okay, this is Florida. Yeah, their landscaping mm -hmm. is immaculate every mm -hmm. single day. They have, uh, you know, perennials out and, yeah, it's it's just really beautiful and people often ask and we can talk about this for the the viewers out there like what is this cdd what is this stewardship that a lot of these places require no, we should do that yeah and um i'll go right into it go right into it <laughs> go uh, so so a lot of times you hear the term cdd what that actually is is a stewardship that the community puts in place for future roadways for common areas to stay beautiful with the landscape uh, for repairs for you know those community mailboxes mm -hmm. uh, community trees they have to be a certain type of tree right uh, you you can't plant fruit trees actually in certain parts of Lakewood Ranch. Maybe really, I didn't know that. Lakewood Ranch. Yeah, you can't just have plant like a uh, mm -hmm. an orange tree or a lemon tree in the in your backyard, okay. which is, you know, that might not be great for everybody. Yeah, I know. When I was a kid, that was part of what you thought about in Florida. It's part of Florida. Was going into Citrus. your backyard and getting an orange. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So so times have changed, especially for like I said, for those that are viewing and you know, maybe they visited Florida and now they're in their 60s, even 70s and planning on moving here. There's so many options. There really and truly is. It's really kind of incredible. Now, of course, your specialty, although you live in Lakewood Ranch and, and I'd say that's your, your home base. Yeah. But you have listings pretty much everywhere. Not everywhere, but you go way out of Lakewood Ranch. Yeah. I mean, I, I just actually sold a home to uh, a, sen a senior, if you will. She was 72 years old. That senior. Um, you know, so moving from Port Charlotte to uh, Northport, mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry, from Fort Myers to Port Charlotte, Northport area, which right. is kind of one in the same, a little bit, 40 minutes south of yeah. Sarasota. Um, you know, and it, it was really to downsize. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of that. We see a lot of folks in this age range, in this time of their life, where they're not necessarily moving from another state, but they're moving within Florida. Yeah. For different reasons. One of the incredible statistics and, and one of the reasons that, that made me come up with the concept of this show is that statistics the last few years are showing that your average person between 62 and, that just sounds terrible, death, uh, <laughs> is going to move more than twice, is going to move two or more times. Really? From the time that they, add, it's a new study, that the time they went, I'm retiring. But when you now figure you're going to be 90, let's say... You, so between 62 and yeah, 90... Yeah, that's 28 you years. Two times. You're going to move at least two times because your needs change. Maybe you want to be closer to the water, 
Maybe suddenly playing golf five days a week, you want to do it, but you're not able. Yeah. Or maybe you're even more able than you want to go closer, or the children and grandchildren are, so, are getting up there in years. They're not visiting as often. Maybe they even moved to Florida. Yeah, like or maybe you of, live on a golf course. Yeah. And you don't want to And you're tired of the balls coming into the living room and stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. As you, get, yeah, um, <laughs> as you get older, ducking those golf balls while you're watching 62 Who Knew on yeah. Monday night is very hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I've seen the opposite too, where people you know they've lived on the water for the mm -hmm. last ten fifteen years, and they're just over the uh, uh, traffic. The cat, the cat for hurricanes well, blowing them well, away. Traffic. It could, it could be it could be anything really. <laughs> He's he makes me laugh every show. Yeah. But yeah. but yeah, I mean, every lifestyle is different at every phase of your life. I, I'm I know it's unprofessional, but I'm asking because I was talking. <laughs> Did you say thirty or ten, John? I'm sorry. 30, okay, we're still good. We've got about 20 seconds left. 20 uh, seconds. 20 seconds. Well, no, there's no doubt about it. And again, it, it, this whole theory of living to be 90, which is very, very soon going to be 100, I still say most of people, and I don't mean this when people go, most people don't think of it. It sounds so terrible, and I'm not meaning it like that. <laughs> but most people don't sit down and think about how this is going to affect this planet being alive 25 to 30 years after you retire. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I do want to talk about we some are things going that to. are going on with We're the We're going right now, though, because John's talking to my ear. One bee that loves going to the dentist. I am Dr. B. At Dr. B Pediatric Dentistry, we understand the individuality of each child. And they also teach us how to take care of our teeth. And offer an exceptional and gentle dental care experience for all children. With our laser procedures, we are able to provide gentler treatments and faster healing time. Come meet Dr. B. A brutality freak. Call Dr. B's Pediatric Dentistry today. Hi, my name is Mike Banner, and in addition to being the host of the 62 Who Knew television show, I am also the president of Professional Mortgage Alliance, where our passion is helping seniors entering retirement purchase their dream retirement home without the obligation of a monthly principal and interest payment. Please call me at 727-224-3859 or visit my website at professionalmortgagealliance.com. My name is Ann Rogers and I'm a real estate agent and broker in Pinellas County and have been for over 24 years. Ann Rogers Relocation Resources provides a full array of services to help you or your loved one transition gracefully to a new residence or adult living community. Our first consultation is free and with no obligation. Please visit our website or call to talk to me directly. My name is Lisa Marie Kennedy, your real estate expert here in the Sarasota Lakewood Ranch Bradenton area. I spent years developing myself, studying the industry so I can serve you and communicate with you the best way possible in your real estate transaction. My phone number is 941-807-2054 or please visit my website at lisamariekennedy.com.
Well, get that phone down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we're halfway through the show. We're talking with our first guest and the hostess, the co-hostess with the mostest, Ms. Dr. Lisa Kennedy. Welcome back, guys. Uh, before we go right back into the psychology again of totally different needs, this yes. is not a growing family. Um, this is wanting to draw the family. You brought up some interesting things. Mm -hmm. I do want to touch a little bit because we don't touch on it a lot. Um, again, about the this whole idea of being 62 to 65 and having 25 to 30 years in front of you. Um, the odds are, unlike my grandparents, yeah. um, who I'm old, so my grandparents have been gone a while. Well, uh, one died in his uh, mid-80s. Yeah. The other made it to 97 or 98. That is you know, some longevity That right is some there. longevity, yes. Um, but the truth, who knew? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, they moved into a condominium in um, West Palm Beach mm -hmm. uh, when they were in their mid-60s. Yep. And that is where Grandpa died. Mm. And that is where Grant Crest Haven, it just came back to me. I think it's still there, Crest Haven in West Palm Beach. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's going way back. Yeah. But that is where Grandpa died. So 30 died. years, 30 yeah, years. Yeah, and then Grandma ultimately went into a facility. Yeah. Um, but Grandma was, in fact, a perfect example of what I'm talking about, even though this was... 25 years ago. Yes. Grandpa's had a very, very small pension from a bread company. Mm -hmm. Social Security was, you know, not that much. Grandma life was life. the greatest yeah. generation grandma. Yeah. Never worked. Yeah. Her Social Security wouldn't buy us a Happy Meal. That's right. So fortunately, Grandma had um, my dad and three brothers, four greatest generation brothers, yeah. who uh, all wrote a check every month mm -hmm. and made sure grandma was well taken care of yeah. until she died. It, some families are not capable of that right now and, and yet we're going to live longer and longer and yeah. longer. And we spoke earlier before the commercial break about when folks are planning on retiring to Florida, mm -hmm. sometimes it isn't their forever home. Like my mom actually, I don't know if she's watching out there. Hope you're watching mom. <laughs> she just retired at the age of 66. And, you know, she bought a small little place, and she already knows she's only going to be there for five more years. See, that's amazing. And she threatens me that she's going to live till she's 85. Yeah, she's going to live longer than that. She's definitely <laughs> she gonna says live 85. 80, but... That's her goal? <laughs> we got to move that goal up. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Uh, but uh, it's a perfect example in everyday real life, in my own life, yeah. that... You know, she just wanted to get here as a snowbird first right. and be with myself and my family and my children and, um, you know, live out those retirement years a certain way. And I think everyone at that age has a certain idea yes. of what it's going to be like. And, then I still ask, and then I still ask her, what do you do all day? Right. <gasps> what well, do you do all day? Do you day? have sisters and brothers? I'm the only child. Oh, so that's cool. So she came down to be with you and your children. Yeah. That, you see, there's nothing better than having, you know, I'm, I'm biased being a single dad my whole life. Mm -hmm. But I'm biased. You know, my children's babysitters were my parents. Mm. Um, nothing is better than, than having grandma and grandpa down here. I'm sorry, Amen either or, either or, but sometimes it's not both of you not, yeah. unfortunately enough to do that. But yeah, that's a different show altogether. Nothing's better than having uh, the kids grow up with grandma and grandpa in their life, yeah. which Florida is known for, let's face it. Yeah, and I, w I wish she had been able to do that, and I wish I had been able to do that for her when mm -hmm. the kids were, were babies, but you know, I'm, I'm grateful now. Absolutely. My, my children are still in middle school. Because she really does have 20, 25 years left, oh, if not yeah. more. And yes. that's that's staggering. Yeah, that's part of Florida that people don't talk about. They talk about the water. They talk about the golf courses. They talk about you know real estate. We'll talk about commissions and needs. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, as much as Florida is known as the retirement capital of the United States of America, it still is. Uh, we talk about palm trees. If you're on the other coast here, we don't have that many palm trees. You know, uh, we fool around about the hurricanes and things like that. But the mm -hmm. truth is, blue skies, beautiful water playing tennis, jet skiing, nine, ten months a year. And although we were used to be known, quite frankly, as that, you come down here to die. Um, in fact, I've said this before, the, the state cliche, a lot of people don't realize this, but the state cliche actually is the state slogan, arrive alive. A lot of people don't remember that. Somebody bear I me. Somebody that, watching, please bear me out. Put it on Facebook. <laughs> and when I moved down here in the mid '70s, every license plate. This was before arrive Challenger. Alive. Before you could put things on your license plate, said "Arrive Alive." Wow. That is our state slogan. In other words, just live the rest of your life. Come and die in Florida. Have just arrive fun. alive. Yeah. But the truth is, we've changed. There's now more than 20 million people. Yeah. We're as big as New York. We're not New York, that's for sure. But we're as big as New York. And people are coming down here and forming memories, not just retirement Massive. memories, 
but family memories that are going to last forever. Multi genera It's not just come down and go to Disney World no, anymore. No, no. It's now when come I was down a kid, and live. Like that. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah. why I moved to Florida. My grandparents lived in Deltona Beach, mm -hmm. right outside of Daytona. And when I turned 21, I'm like, I'm out of here. Yeah. You know, and and it was because. Say that I again. Came, How did you do that? I'm out of here. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it was that vision, even at a young age, like 21, that I said, you know what? I want the sunny. Blue yeah. skies. I want the palm trees. I, I, I grew up in Maine. Oh, that's not, that's not you know? good. Winter there, that's not <laughs> Small good. Small town in Maine, so I wanted it's cold out of there. In Maine. But, you know, I think the, some of the, old, the older mentality, if you will, thinks that they have to wait. Yeah. You don't have to wait. No, Florida is not what it used to be. No. Florida is a place now to come down, build a career. Our education system that was sadly lacking yeah. is still lacking a little teeny bit, but it's caught up on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Florida is a great place to, to build your family. There is no way to get around it. That's not the old Florida. Yeah. But again, we're going to get back. We, we, we segue just a little. Just a little bit. Talk a little bit about, again, whereas the, the growing family wants school districts, yeah. um, thir certain things like that. What are the seniors looking for? Yeah. Well, other than, you know, I, the first question I always ask is lifestyle. Because mm -hmm. a lot of folks say, I want to be near the beach. And then they realize a lot of times in their price point or their budget, they can't be near the beach in a 3,500 square foot house that's custom built for 300000 No. It's not going to happen. That's a cabana on the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So a, a lot of times it is educating, mm -hmm. bringing them back, you know, really in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, reality, if you will, and saying, hey, you know what? I have a great group of partners, mortgage lenders, credit repair, um, whatever it is that mm -hmm. they need. Uh, the school system, you know, there's so many great resources for that. Um, if it happens to be someone that, you know, a lot of times these second generation uh, baby boomers, they've taken over with the grandchildren. Exactly. Oh, no doubt. Exactly. I put the words right in my mouth. And, and it gives me chills to say that because, you know, there, there are so many things that can happen within the family unit. Yeah, the family unit is not what, let's face it, we all discussed this, I think, at our dining room tables yep. or living room tables within our own family. Mm -hmm. I mean, divorce rates are yes. so totally different than they were. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but if you bring it back 30 or 40 years, yeah. you know, the second generation family, the, the second and third marriages who have children that are referred to as yeah. yours, mine, and ours, because yes. they could even be the, the family. And the grandparents you, are healthy, yeah, active. And they're young, help, and they're helping. Right. You know, we just went through five years of the most terrible recession this country has seen since 1929, and I know a lot of grandparents, yep. you know, that are actively helping with their children, with their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, it's part of that living longer I don't want to get too much into the marriage thing because I'm not the best example of that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, can you imagine getting married in your early 20s? No. Okay. I got married Mid for the first time at 46. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. See, I can't. My two-year anniversary just passed. Happy anniversary to you. What's your <laughs> husband's name? Matthew. Happy anniversary, Matthew. <laughs> um, yeah, but can you imagine? And I know people are going to go, this is my, my relatives are going, please don't say this. <laughs> but I'm saying it because it's my show. Um, can you imagine getting married like in your mid twenties, living to be a hundred, and being married to the same person for eighty years? I'm not they, sure I love anybody that much. The greatest generation has done it. <laughs> you know, I mean, back in. Oh look, look, see, I was, I oh. was. This, this is, this is why we have the greatest producer in the world. Yeah. Don put this up for us. Seventy. I, I, 1972. Yeah. This is our. This is our. Uh, I was three. You were three. Thanks for rubbing that in. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Arrive alive. See, just get your butt down here. We'll we'll bury you here. Just <laughs> arrive alive. But the truth of the matter is, again, it's just different. Yeah. Uh, marriage, you know, first marriages are, I think, lasting right now. I think it's a 50-50 percentage with your first marriage. Yeah. And it's been that way for 10 years. And I'm not making fun That's of that. That's probably why I waited so long. <laughs> yeah, and you were probably smart to do that. I, I am. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not going to talk about marriages. <laughs> Certainly not an expert either. Yeah, people, are, people that know me are going, don't talk about marriages. <laughs> let's get right back to real estate before I say something really bad. Um, go ahead. Let's go back to real estate. <laughs> so, so, again, you put them, you give them some reality so they know what they can afford. They, yeah. Then not everybody can live on the beach. Well, yeah. I and then we digress a, from there. There's a certain perception. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, uh, they've been manifesting it their whole life, right? that, you know, I want to retire in Florida, I want to be near the beach. And then once I uncover some of those certain things, like, <clears throat> you know what, You're, I'm really not going to be at the beach every day. I want to be near the beach. Right. I love to golf. And 
But to be quite honest, in the Sarasota Bradenton area, there's not a ton of golf courses near the water. You can find that on the That's East rough. Coast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can find that. But really, uh, it's like, do you want to live that country club golf lifestyle or do you want to live the beach lifestyle? Yeah, because that's two different lifestyles. It's way different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the time I, I uncover that they do want to have that country club social environment in, in the price point, mm -hmm. you know, 500, let's just say 500 and above. Right. Um, you know, they want the resort style communities. They mm -hmm. want to be able to walk on nature trails and meet different people yeah. and play tennis and yeah. go to the athletic club and play golf. It's not just about laying on the beach. Yeah, it's not about coming Walking. home and laying. Retirement isn't what it used to be. I mean, no. that's the whole, actually it's the whole premise. It's lifestyle. Of, yeah, it's the whole premise of 62 who knew. This just isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Then again, nothing is. I think one of the smartest people, I don't know who the original quote is, but one of the smartest people I ever knew taught me the only thing consistent in life is change. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I thought you were going to say death and taxes. No, death and taxes. <laughs> I've gotten away with taxes for a while, but not now. I'm current. If anybody from IRS is watching, I'm fine. Just everything's fine. No, the... Um, the, the truth is, again, it, it, it always gets back to, and I live this through my mortgage life, and I deal with so many financial planners, mm -hmm. long-term care providers. When you're talking about an average, you know, getting to 90, 92 years old, and you're in your early 60s, that's half, you're, you're alive 62 years, you might be alive another 30. Yeah. That's another half of your life. And actively. And, and you want to do it actively with some quality. Right. And quality of life is different for different people. Yeah. Let's face it, quality of life for some people may be playing golf five days a week. Quality of life for some people may be just being with their grandchildren and five do, days a week. Or doing nothing. Right, yeah, or doing nothing. That's rough. <laughs> If that's your idea of quality of life, doing nothing, that's not good. I'll be honest here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll ask that question a lot of times. Mm. Like, you know, sometimes they'll come to me and want to do their five-year plan or three-year mm -hmm. plan or whatever it is, and I'll say, okay, you know, paint me a picture of what you think that life's going to look like. A lot of times the answer is, I just want to do nothing. They've worked their whole life, yeah. so that's like so programmed in their mind. Wow. So if they're thinking that, I try to dig a little bit deeper. Yeah. You know, like there are so get it past many nothing. things. Yeah, get it come past nothing. Come come over the hump a little bit. Yeah. You know, but but I think people ha are to that point to a certain extent where mm -hmm. where the, yeah they have worked their whole lives and it might not have been in a job that they necessarily like at all. That's right. That's true. Yeah. There's no way. Which to is get another them. conversation. Another conversation. Totally. We have one minute left, and yeah, you, you did bring something up That's also. It? Yeah, I know. It goes so quick, especially when. Yeah, we have another segment, though. Yeah, yeah okay. John just reminded us. Um, you brought up something else also, though, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, people work for so long mm -hmm. at doing something. And, again, that's, that's changed now, not maybe with my generation, because I've been in the mortgage business 36 years, <laughs> but with the younger generation, it's not uncommon for them to have six different careers, each one upwardly mobile, mm -hmm. which is great. I'm, yeah. you know, that, I'm not putting that down. Yeah. But the, today's generations and the generation maybe right before it doesn't put up with, I stayed there for 40 years no. for my pension. There are no pensions anymore unless nope. you're working for the state or the government or the well, city. Well, let's think about why those were created, right? Yeah. They were created to have you be stuck there. Yeah, golden handcuffs. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, no, it's, uh, it's just such a totally different world, but uh, to get down to Florida at 62 years old and to have a great 20 or 30 years. And again, I think if you put 10 people in a room and ask them to define what retirement is, mm -hmm. you get 10 different answers. Oh, yeah. To me, retirement is not having to work, quite frankly. Right. I, I don't ever want to sit around um, and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd want to do things, but I don't want to have to work. That's right. Um, right now, I have to work, which is... Well, you need to call and maybe get a mortgage or something like that. From that would be the 62whoNew.com. Uh, <laughs> Shameless plug. But Shameless no, plug number three for the for the first 30 minutes. You're absolutely right because you know what what else is there? I mean, yeah. If you have 30 years left, that's a long have, time. That's a long time. That's a lot of golf. Yeah. It's a lot of tennis. It's a lot of pickleball. Pickle and ball. what's up with pickleball? I just don't it get it. It is huge. It's huge. It's, I never even heard of it till a year ago. There, there are pickleball tournaments everywhere. Ten seconds are left with them. We're gonna. <laughs> when we might talk about pickleball, when we come back. We might not. I have never played. And neither have I. I love pickles though. So does that help at all? No. No. Okay. We gotta go. One bee that loves going to the dentist. At Dr. B Pediatric Dentistry, we understand the individuality of each child. And they also teach us 
how to take care of our teeth and offer an exceptional and gentle dental care experience for all children. With our laser procedures, we are able to provide gentler treatments and faster healing time. Come meet Dr. B. The Vitality Freak. Call Dr. B's Pediatric Dentistry today. Hi, my name is Mike Banner, and in addition to being the host of the 62 Who Knew television show, I am also the president of Professional Mortgage Alliance, where our passion is helping seniors entering retirement purchase their dream retirement home without the obligation of a monthly principal and interest payment. Please call me at 727-224-3859 or visit my website at professionalmortgagealliance.com. My name is Ann Rogers and I'm a real estate agent and broker in Pinellas County and have been for over 24 years. Ann Rogers Relocation Resources provides a full array of services to help you or your loved one transition gracefully to a new residence or adult living community. Our first consultation is free and with no obligation. Please visit our website or call to talk to me directly. My name is Lisa Marie Kennedy, your real estate expert here in the Sarasota Lakewood Ranch Bradenton area. I spent years developing myself, studying the industry so I can serve you and communicate with you the best way possible in your real estate transaction. My phone number is 941-807-2054 or please visit my website at lisamariekennedy.com. Hey, and we're back. This is our final segment. We had just brought something up during our break. We should actually film during our break. We really I know. Should, so people can hear <laughs> what we're talking about, or maybe not. Um, when I moved here in 1975, I can't believe, wow. 43 years ago, kicking and screaming. It's my sister's fault, Sharon. I'll get you back for that one day. Um, <laughs> hopefully you're watching. You know, there was really, I mean, everybody knew it in the nation. Um, the New Yorkers, the New Jerseyers, you know, the New North Jersey East, or? the New Jerseyers, the, the New York wannabes. I like it. Yeah, yeah. They actually went to the East Coast of Florida. Yes. Midwesterners, Canadians. Yeah, to boat uh, Yeah, actually came here to the West Coast of Florida. Yeah. I'm seeing that trend change. I'm seeing, you know, people from Northeast. I love the East Coast. I absolutely love the Boca. Palm Beaches, Fort Lauderdale, I, I absolutely do. But I'm seeing people go there, then visit here and go, oh my God, I love the Gulf. I love the fact that it's, you know. The that culture. The culture. Highway 19 may have traffic, but it sure as hell ain't Highway 95. No, um, you're right. So, yeah. Are you seeing a trend of more Northeasterners coming to our coast, to the West Coast? Yeah, more than you know. Oh, and that's good. Exactly what you said. They will have spent maybe 20 years on the East Coast after coming down from the Northeast, New Jersey, mm -hmm. 
Pennsylvania, where, you know, so anywhere along the coastline of the East Coast, and then visit the West Coast and say, I can't believe how yeah. different this is. And it is. It really is. It the, is. I mean, I love the waves of the ocean because I was brought up in New York. Well, you can so surf on the East Coast. Yeah, you can surf, but, you know, the Gulf of Mexico Not is so beautiful. Much. We have less hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Our storms are less. I always get a kick when I go to the beach down here still. And somebody will see like a 12-inch wave and go, wow, the Ooh. waves are big. I go, That's not even a wave. No, I mean, it's like a wakeboard But thing. it is beautiful down here. There's no way to get around it, and it's not as congested. Well, I, I think the culture, too, I mean, even it's, it's like considered, I look at the west coast of Florida as more like an old world Florida, especially with the culture all from Naples to Fort Myers, yeah. all the way up to Sarasota with the Ringling Museum of Arts. Mm -hmm. um, Naples circus. is so beautiful. It is. I mean, I'm not a fan of the circus, but I Why, mean, just because they tortured the animals? You're, just, you're against that, are you? Yeah, totally against yeah, that. I'm against that too. Uh, they did too. But yes, they did. He's telling me they. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. But um, Peter was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're familiar with Peter, right? Yeah. People eating tasty animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, I was a member for a while. But anyway, uh, I just think that it's a different feel. The sand is different. The beaches are oh, different. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, it's complete. It, not to say that the East Coast isn't beautiful. No, it's Because fine. it is. And they each have their own benefits. Right. I mean, I always thought of like Boca and West Palm a little bit more glamorous. Um, yes, it still is. And, and, it, and I think to a certain extent it still is. And I was in my mid-30s until I realized, I always thought that if you were Jewish and you came from New York like me, mm -hmm. that it was a law that you moved to Boca Raton. I didn't even yeah. know we were allowed in Tampa Bay. Right. Yeah, I thought my dad got like <laughs> special dispensation or something from the government to let Jews through in 1975. It wasn't easy. Yeah, but if, if any of the viewers are thinking about visiting, I really think they should visit both visit sides. Visit the West Coast. Coast of Florida before you make your decision. And or again, they could visit the Redneck Riviera. Yes, but that's, what's that, the Panhandle? Yeah, that, that's the Panhandle. That's the Panhandle. In case you all didn't know that. Or Pasco there. County. <laughs> My children were born in Fort Walton Beach. Really? So Do they talk like that? No, they don't. Yeah, they don't. No. <laughs> that's like Fort Myers. Yeah. It's spelt Myers. It's pronounced Mars. Right. Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Yeah. But, you know, Destin, Pensacola, Tallahassee, all that's in the Panhandle, but it, it's a different feel. It's a much different feel. Well, it's a much different feel than the rest of Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very south. It's very yeah. southern. So there's three parts of Florida, the Panhandle, the East Coast, the West Coast, and then right. there's, and then there's, Central, then there's well, Miami. Well, well, Miami, is that still part of America? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Miami, I didn't mean that. Yes, I did. Uh, but there's Central Florida also that is in a world of its own. Oh, and, yeah. so, and kind of beautiful, too. I mean, you got to get used to Route 4. Mm -hmm. um, which is which is crazy, but again, where Disney World was, you know, one of the main reasons you came to Florida the in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. Now Disney World is the center hub of a economic boom of Central Florida yeah. that feeds millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. Central Florida is kind of a staggering place to see. Yeah. There's no way to get around yeah, it. But we got off a little, talk. we got, we're talking so much about the greatness of Florida. Yeah. We'll talk about a few things. How many, I don't mean a real number, but if you had to give a percentage, if you had to guess, how many of your uh, senior borrowers coming from up north yeah. are paying cash? Is it a big percentage? Uh, mm, I'd say around 70%. It is a big percentage. I, I'd say, yeah. That, yeah. Well, I think once you get past the six or 700,000 mark, yeah. It's cash. Yeah. The majority of the time. And even if it's not all cash, a portion of it might be a mortgage. Right, but it's but majority cash. The majority is cash. And I they're mean, taking their proceeds from the house that they just sold. Yeah. And they're putting it towards it, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, Absolutely. they don't want to be in any debt. And why should it's a, they? It's, well, a, it's a mindset. One of the things I'm seeing in the financial planning world as I speak throughout the country on mortgages is there now is a real division. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean a division that they're competing with each other, but there's the old school of thinking that I am retiring with no debt. And that's just what I'm going to do. And that really is our parents' point of view. Mm -hmm. There is a tremendously growing segment. Yeah. I mean, it's catching up like crazy, which I am always going to be in debt as long as it's manageable. I'm not young. I'm not overextending. Mm -hmm. But yes, I want that million-dollar house, but I'm only capable of putting a half a million down. Yeah. Yes, I really want that $80,000 car. And I will put fifty thousand dollars down and have a small car payment. Right, yeah, right, the, right. The, the new the, world is is like as debt. long as our debt is manageable, what's manageable wrong with debt. it? Manageable yeah. debt. And I'm not endorsing that. Sure. Um, but there is a certain logic to it. Again, if you're going to live to be ninety or ninety-five, possibly taking that seven hundred thousand that you just made on your house, yeah, and putting it all into your new house, 
you might want to really consider putting 350 or 400 down. Yeah. Having a small mortgage payment, especially if you're in the upper middle class mm -hmm. and you're not hurting for income, you're not rich, but you're not hurting, and then giving that other three or 400,000 to your financial planner right. who will do something wonderful with it. Yes. So when you're in your upper 80s, you're not broke. Yeah. You know, I, which I, is, I, again, I a lot philosophy. about this show is about. I mean, so many people, I'm going to pay cash. Why? Well, it's the same with the car, too. Yeah. Like, if you talk, talk to them, well, you should buy the car outright and keep it for 15 years. Like, my mom, same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I like having a lease, and I like having a new car every few years. Yeah, I know. I have, all the maintenance is taken care of. I, it is a different mentality. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've only had one car without a pay. It was a second car. But, I'm, you know, car payment is part of my life. That may sound crazy to yeah, certain people. To certain people. But I like the warranty. Yeah. I like the new I car like smell. Too. I like the new styles. Mm -hmm. And you know what? As long as life is good and you can make the payment. You know, but, you know, yeah, but that's also got and me And then in you trouble. have the mentality of let's run it into the ground. <laughs> yeah, not that I can't do that. 250,000 miles. Yeah. All right, we have one minute left. It was so great having you. We're not going to wait 10 weeks to have you back again. Okay. Uh, please Thank you. do go to our website, 62 Who Knew. Uh, we're making constant changes to it. But before the end of this year, it really is going to be, I am hoping it develops into a source for you, mm -hmm. our viewers. Big things From happen. everything, yeah, from real estate to long-term care, in-home care, life insurance, Medicare supplements. I mean, anything, health, yeah. yoga, uh, stem cell research. I want the 62 Who Knew premise to be something that all of your viewers can go to and say, you know what, I may not have, I may not know that person, but at least I watch them every Monday. I've seen their guests, um, and at least you know that these people have gone through a certain amount of a credibility check. Um, so with about 10 seconds left, again, all our, 10 seconds left, all our good thoughts and prayers to all the people in the Carolinas. Please be safe. A few seconds to go. We're going to see you. We have a great show next week. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Right. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>